Hello everyone. In this video, we'll learn all about something called splines. Say we want our bug to fly on a path. How do we specify a nice curve like this? Well, you can try drawing a bunch of points and using a ruler to connect them. But is there a tool like a ruler to draw smooth curves like this? Well, one idea is to take a piece of wire and then pull on different points and pin them down to shape your desired curve. This is actually how it was done in the old days. Drafters used weights to apply forces to a thin wooden strip. Moving the weights causes the strip to bend. The resulting curve is called a spline, and you can use a pen to trace its shape on the paper. Splines were popular in shipbuilding whenever you needed to design a curved section. Each weight looks a bit like a whale, but from the side, it's more like the head of a duck, so they're called duck weights. The wood strip wants to stay straight. It takes energy to bend. The more it bends, the more energy is used. We can simulate this process on a computer. Think of the duck weights as specifying a set of control points. And our goal is to solve for a smooth interpolating curve. Let's think of the curve as a set of points. The blue ones are specified and the red ones we have to solve for. Let's zoom into three of these. The spline minimizes a bending energy, which depends on the type of material. For example, whether our wood strip is made out of pine or cedar. We'll use the square of the second derivative as an analogy to this bending energy. It's not physically accurate, but it has similar properties. For example, it's zero when the points are on a perfectly straight line. And as it starts to bend, the value increases. So each sample point T gives us an equation like this that we want to minimize. If you take all of these equations and minimize them together, you get this nice curve. If you double the number of points, it looks smoother and the fit gets more accurate. And it's even better if you double again. But what would this converge to if you had an infinite number of points? The answer is a special curve called a natural cubic spline. And it turns out you don't need to solve an infinite number of equations to compute it. I'll show you how to create it along with other types of splines in this video. So instead of using lots of points, why don't we work with things that are already curved? Here's an example of a simple curve, a quadratic. We'll actually be working with cubics instead, as they give a bit more flexibility. Cubics are specified by four coefficients. We'll explore these one at a time, starting with the last one, which just moves the curve up and down. The next changes the orientation. The quadratic term adds curvature, and the cubic term adds another wiggle. This is a pretty curve. It looks like our whale-shaped weight. But how do you figure out the right coefficients for a desired shape? It's actually really tricky. We just got lucky in this case. Instead, let's give four points that we want the curve to pass through and solve for the curve that interpolates those points. Okay, how does this work? Let's start with the first point. And here's the equation of the curve that we're trying to solve for. This point constraint says that when t equals zero, and we plug in the value of zero for t, the value of the function should be one. We're going to rewrite the equation like this and move it to the top. Now let's move on to the second point. This one is evaluated at t equals two, and its value is set to 1.5. We'll rewrite it in the same form. And so on for the third and the fourth point. Now, how do we solve these equations? We can express them in a matrix equation of the form ax equals b, which you can solve quickly and easily using any linear algebra package. Here's the solution. These are the coefficients for our desired cubic polynomial curve. If we plot this equation, it gives us a nice whale curve. Cool. This approach works for any control points you choose. If the control points are defined at times t1 through t4, and they take on values of c1 through c4, then the coefficients are found by solving this matrix. Moving these control points around gives you a variety of different shapes. 
For some shapes, though, it's easier to specify slopes instead of additional control points. For example, the arrow on the left says we want the slope of the curve to be horizontal at first, to generate a slow ramp. The one on the right controls how fast the front portion goes down. They correspond to the tangents, or first derivatives, of the curve at both endpoints. You can fit a cubic curve this way as well. By moving the tangent, we can control the height of the whale curve. So how do you specify these constraints? Each control point generates an equation, as we've seen before. How about the tangents? Let's take a closer look. The tangent is a vector that computes the derivative of the function. dt is a unit horizontal displacement, and df gives the vertical component. So for the example shown here, the derivative is 2. This tangent corresponds to a derivative of 0. So how do we write a derivative constraint? Well, recall our cubic equation. Let's just take the derivative. Now we can constrain it the same way that we do point constraints. We'll evaluate the derivative at the moment in time when it's active, 0 in this case, and set its desired value, also 0, for a horizontal tangent. Now we'll reformat to match the other constraints. And we repeat this for the other tangent constraint. We can also write this as a matrix equation and solve it. Here's the solution and the equation for our curve. Let's plot it. Ta-da! And given any pair of control points and tangents, here's the general form of the constraint matrix. Stay tuned for part two. I'm putting these curves together to form splines.